Alright guys, welcome to another beer review and uh, this is the next beer um, of the three that were kindly sent to me by uh, the wonderful, wonderful Yankee and Kraut, Brian and Max. And this is a can of the Kvyk New England IPA brewed in collaboration with uh, Hopperbroi, obviously Markus Hopper. Uh, who's a great brewer in his own right. Um, I'm still yet to try the Hopper Broy Hellers, which I know last time I checked, I can't remember what website it was on, but it was available to buy in the UK for like an import website, but I never got around to doing it, even though it was really cheap, and I do love a good Hellers. But um, yeah, always good to get a bit of Yankee und Kraut action, one of my favourite German craft breweries and uh, it just happens to be run by some really nice folks and they sent over uh, two cans of this, two cans of the demolition can which you will have already seen and then two cans of a, or two bottles I should say, of a, a Maibok, I think it was a Maibok. I've already had uh, the first can of this and the first bottle of Maibok but you'll be seeing in a day or so um, that third and final review for this week. I think I'm going to try and get these uploaded in between uh, some Northern Monk beers that I've uh, had on the channel that I just need to get uploaded. So I hope you're enjoying this week's worth of videos, even though it's just two breweries essentially. But anyway, I don't care. Because if it's good beer, it's good beer. Do you know what I mean? So, Kvik, you and IPA, not saying that right at all. Um, let's see. Dubne? Is that. I'm not too sure, I looked this up the first time I got it, um, but it does give you an explanation of the word, or the non-differentiable time between one midnight and the next in subpolar regions of Norway. 7% ABV beer, lovely, lovely artwork there, nice metallic label, starts off nice and bright and sunny, then gets a little bit darker, and uh, yeah, this is hot with Simcoe. And best before is the 5th of March 2021. I think this was a relatively new release when it was sent to me. I've had it, I've had it a few weeks, I'm not gonna lie. But um, yeah, looking forward to giving this one a try. So as always, links down below to Yankee and Kraut. I've reviewed a few beers on the channel now. So let's see what we get with this one. Not really had too many IPAs with that um, yeast strain. And I uh, can't really remember too much because it was a short while ago and I've drank a few beers since then. Uh, since what I initially thought of this. But well, it was really good. I mean, Demolition Can has just been fantastic. Anyway, but yeah, look at that lovely, hazy goodness. It's a little bit dark, a little bit more turbid. It's got a slight orangey look to it. Uh, Nobed Pour, a three fingers worth of uh, a white head. Adam from Mosey Beers would be proud. So let's see what we get on the nose. I think that that head is stopping a lot of those aromas coming through. Apologies for the washing machine, by the way. I'm just in the middle of doing some cooking because going to a friend's house tonight with a couple of people from work. And uh, I want to be that person who takes food. Do you know what I mean? Even though we'll probably end up getting takeaway anyway doesn't matter I want to be that person who, like makes food and takes it to gatherings so I'm currently uh, doing some beer brined um, buffalo style chicken wings there's some uh, just basic um, breaded chicken hot strips that I got from Aldi but I've uh, coated them with uh, some spicy honey to finish them off and then I'm going to be making some sausage rolls as well and I've got a couple of big packs of crisps so I want to be that person do you know what I mean I like me food. That reminds me, just have to very quickly check on my chicken because that's been in for a little while. There we go, look at that. Life simple pleasures. It's got a little bit of a shine to it or a glistening to it because of that spicy honey uh, which I picked up from Whisk and Pickle who uh, make fucking awesome pizzas in uh, the Skelmersdale area. area and the surrounding areas in the northwest. Anyway, so yeah, I'm being constructive on a Saturday. So beer in a glass looks good. Let's see if that head dispainer can get a little bit more. 
it's got a soft sherbetty aroma to it. It's got like a Haribo character, like that sweet fruitiness. A little bit leafy, like herbal I should say, not leafy. Nice bready biscuity malts coming through. Yeah, it's got a little bit of like a tangerine aroma. I mean, it smells really, really nice. You have to really get a big sniff to get you know, a lot of aroma, but what is there? It's just nice, subtle, a little bit citrusy, a little bit sweet. It's smelling good, so let's give it a taste. Prost. It's a little bit of a slight funkiness to it. Now, I'm not sure if the crick I don't know if I, how you pronounce that. I don't know if that yeast imparts that, or if that Simcoe is playing a part in that as well. Because it's got like this slight passion fruit gooseberry sort of character to it. And there is a slightly pronounced um, off-centered yeastiness to it, without it being yeasty, if that makes sense. Which just adds a little bit to the beer, it almost has a slight, it's almost like it's venturing flavour wise into something like a, a hoppy wheat beer, like a Schneiderweiss's Hopfenweizer. I'm just going to keep making German beer and, you know, what's the word? Brain's just shut off in the middle of speaking. Um, comparisons, by the way. It's not as hoppy or as fruity as the uh, demolition can. I wasn't expecting it to be because that's like a really upfront um, New England style double dry hop IPA. But this, you get those sort of flavours. But it's sort of reined in and it finishes quite dry actually as well. It has a slight peach character coming through on the back end as well. It's certainly first quenching. Uh, 7% ABV, you could get in some serious trouble with this. Um, is it my favourite hoppy profile? Probably not. I think I do at this point prefer Demolition Can. But this has just got something a little bit intriguing to it. Something a little bit different. Not as like flavoursome, but I don't mean that as if to say this doesn't have flavour. Just you compare, it's like comparing chalk and cheese with that sort of IPA with this sort of IPA. And that, that yeast does definitely give it something a bit interesting, but I've not had too many beers that have used <laughs> that yeast strain. So I can't really comment on it. So I'm just going to fall into the trap of comparing this to the previous one that I've reviewed on the channel. Which I think is quite unfair, really. But I could see people really enjoying this. It is a lovely beer. It's going down really well. It complements something like a spicy, you know... Um, buffalo chicken wing that sort of thing I think because of that sort of like funky tartness in there that cut through the you know the vinegary spiciness of like buffalo wing sauce in fact you could probably brine chicken wings in this and add a really nice flavour to them so yeah it's still a lovely lovely beer uh, artwork is fantastic though it's got a bit darker in it so you can't see it properly it's not doing it any justice at all and uh, yeah it's great to get something not only from Yankee and Kraut but from Hopper Boy um, who produce some really interesting pale ales and IPAs and probably one of the best barrel aged imperial stouts that I've had out of Germany uh, which I was lucky enough to try at a tasting in Beretta where I actually met uh, Marcus and um, yeah, I missed, I missed out on some of the other beers, but I'm, I've missed the German sort of a craft scene. I wish I'd been a little bit more involved in it, to be honest. Um, but yeah, there's always time. Once coronavirus is gone, I'm going to uh, the likes of Ingolstadt to meet up with the uh, Yankee and Kraut boys, bring some UK craft down as well. Um, but also, you know, just Bavaria in general, beautiful part of Germany. But I also, I've never been to Bamberg, which is sacrilege. I've never been to Berlin or Hamburg either. So there are places in Germany that I just really need to, to visit. And uh, hopefully 
uh, once it's a little bit more safer and uh, potential travel restrictions have been lifted, I shall make another trip to Germany. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, this is uh, treating me right. So in terms of a rating then, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, highly recommend if you give it a try. If you like uh, Crick IPAs, uh, you might like this a lot more than I would. Um, I mean, I'm still really enjoying it. 7 out of 10 is territory where I would buy uh, a can if I could. And uh, yeah, massive, massive thank you to uh, Yankee and Kraut for sending this over with the other beers. Really, really appreciate it. Anyway, if you've tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. Go check out um, Yankee and Kraut in the description. Look on the channel for other reviews that I've done from the brewery. And a yeah, massive, massive thank you to Brian and Max for, and the rest of the Yankee and Kraut family, of course, uh, for sending over some beers. And uh, I'm really enjoying them. And uh, yeah, definitely one of my favourite German craft breweries. I'm not just saying that because I've been given free beer, it's because the beer's fucking good and the people are good and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Anyway, let me know if you've tried this or anything else from the brewery and thank you all for watching. Cheers.